Hey everyone, I am at the Rob Greenfield Recycled Cabin. And no, I did not name a cabin after myself. I'm at the St. Michael Sustainable Community. And the founder, Justin Dolan, is someone who's been inspired by my work for quite a few years now, maybe five years. And three years ago, I visited him. And afterwards, he was more inspired and decided to build a tiny house, a cabin, after me and after designed after the way that I do my work and the way that I live my life. So this tiny house is built out of 95% secondhand materials. It's inside of an amazing food forest and it's designed to work with nature rather than against it, with using water wisely, using energy wisely, and using the resources around it in a more harmonious, wise way. So today, I'm gonna to give you a tour of the tiny house. Come on with me. So as I said, this was built out of about 95% secondhand materials, and the most beautiful part to me is the wood. This is all wood that was left over from a mill and was going to be thrown out, according to Justin. And it's just the simplest sort of wood cabin tiny house. It's a very, very simple design. Almost everything here is also secondhand material. So there's a table to sit at, you've got a couch, and then the bed. So, you know, that's kind of the living area. And again, you know, the, time, the house itself has pretty few materials used to, be, to build it. It's primarily wood. And as far as furniture items in here, it's about as simple as can be, and all of it together is about 95% secondhand materials. Oh, also, what size it is? The inside is about 12 feet wide by about 18 feet long, making it about 220 square feet, but it feels very spacious, and that's because there's not a lot of stuff the way it's designed. And then, so that makes it about 220 square feet, and the balcony is another six feet, which is another 80 or so square feet. So total, including the balcony, it's about 300 square feet. So pretty small, but it feels very spacious. You can see the breeze is coming through here as well. So it's 90 degrees outside, but stays pretty cool inside. Here's the kitchen. So I want to talk a little bit about water. This house does a few great things. First of all, well, the water is well water, so it's not it's not chlorinated, it's not, doesn't have fluoride in it. It's just pure well water, which is great. Now, in most places when you have water, after it goes down the sink, it goes to a wastewater treatment plant. This water is gray water, so it actually stays on site and waters plants that are, that are food. It waters food plants. So, a, a gray water setup, very basic. The shower is that as well, which actually I'll show you the, the bathroom now to stick to the water theme. The bathroom is, is quite simple. You've got a shower, again, gray water. So the water goes down the drain, out onto the landscape and waters. Now the toilet, this is what's called black water. So this goes to a septic and then those nutrients also stay on site. They don't go to a wastewater treatment plant. You'll see the little garbage can upside down I have sitting here. I don't create garbage in here, so I don't need a can, but I do need a squatty potty. So that's what this is. This is a more natural way of sitting and helping with the flow. Same with the sink, gray water. So that is the bathroom. Um, so the other thing uh, is electricity. So. This house is not off the grid. It would be amazing if it was, but the key here is that it uses very little electricity. You'll see it's got a little electric stove. It has a refrigerator. There's some outlets to charge. You know, there's, there's a couple of lights. There's some outlets, but you'll see there's, there's very few electronic items in here. There's no Wi-Fi, so it's disconnected in that way, which is really great to be here and be present without internet and, be, and just be where you are. The good news though is that the electricity here isn't from fossil fuels, it's actually hydroelectric. So I don't consider that a fully sustainable source of energy, but it's far better. It would be considered alternative energy. So yeah, that's that. I'm going to take you out to the balcony now, which is a pretty beautiful little spot. 
So it's funny, I have a little bit of a hard time because there's not really that much to show here. It, it's extremely simple. But what there is to show is the outside world, and that is the food forest and the edible landscaping. And that's one of the most exciting things about these places, this place. Um, an important other thing is waste. You know, we talked a little bit about water, we talked about energy, sustainable building. Another one is waste. So here I create almost no garbage. That depends on who lives here though, how they decide they want to live. But one of the most important things is composting. So food scraps and, and uh, paper and cardboard, all of that stuff is composted, not sent to a landfill to be actually kept on site to produce food. So holding in the nutrients for this food forest. There's beautiful mango freeze out, trees out front. We've got bananas down here. Um, there's dozens of different fruit trees in the area. Just a couple days ago, there was, I counted 27 monkeys that I watched going from tree to tree. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really great. It's a place where, you know, it's, it's actually designed to work with nature rather than against it. Justin and the, the community here, St. Michael's Sustainable Community, they want to bring more and more animals onto this land and make it a, a natural refuge for them. So, I know what some of you up there in Canada and Northern United States are thinking. Well, some of you are thinking you want to get down here. But a lot of you are thinking, great, well you can do this because it's a warm climate. This is designed for the climate that it's in. If you look at your area, you will see underground houses, you will see earth ships, you will see straw bale houses. You have to design for where you live. There is a YouTube channel that I really recommend called Exploring Alternatives. If you want to see situations that are for that environment, they cover a lot of different environments. But I wanna talk a little bit about solutions. So what are the solutions that you can learn here and, how, and what are the solutions that you can do at home? So I'm gonna share eight different solutions that can be done in any climate around the world. Number one, build with second-hand materials like this place, 95% second-hand repurposed items. So building with second-hand items. Number two, and that is furnishing with second-hand items. Things like the thrift store and Habitat for Humanity. Uh, places where you can buy things secondhand, garage sales, getting things from friends from their overflowing garages. So secondhand materials. I'm going to talk a little bit about water now. So number three is gray water. Whether you're in the city or the countryside, if you're in a high-rise apartment, that's a, that's a different story. But for a lot of people, gray water can be done uh, very simply. The sinks, the showers, and laundry is one of the easiest places to start. Just sending your laundry using biodegradable soaps out to your landscaping. Now you can also just have a bucket in your shower so that that extra water, you can use that to water the plants and you could feasibly carry that down from the upstairs apartment down or use that for your balcony. Of course, just using water wisely, reducing the amount of excess water in the first place. And then uh, number four, Rainwater harvesting. This is something that millions and millions of us can, can do. Whether we're in the desert, that's where it's the most needed, or we're in a tropical climate, everywhere we are, we can do rainwater harvesting. Number five is edible landscaping. So not planting plants that really don't provide any benefit except beauty, but instead planting plants that provide food and medicine and are also beautiful. So edible landscaping, food forestry, front yard gardens, windowsill balcony, or windowsill gardens or balcony gardens, growing food instead of lawns. That is, those are you know, something that, that, that so many of us can do, whether we're in apartments um, or we're in you know, residential areas, big houses. There's always ways to grow a little food and design our systems based on growing food rather than plants that are not benefiting us in as nearly as many ways or the critters around us. And now if you don't have space, then joining a community garden is something that you can do or finding a friend who has space and growing food there and sharing it with them. Number six is composting. Uh, food scraps, yard debris like leaves and sticks and all of that, cardboard, paper, all of these things can be composted to create fertility rather than sent to the landfill. 
Number seven is reduce energy usage. Before you even start talking about alternative energy, first look at how much energy you're using and get rid of all the extraneous ways that you don't really need. So drastically reducing energy usage and then switching over to alternative energy. Now, what in a lot of places what you can do is you can actually join an energy co-op where you actually have alternative energy through the grid that you're supporting rather than the fossil fuel energy. So it doesn't require any infrastructure, you just change over your bill to a source of renewable energy. And then lastly, number eight, and that is be happy with what you have. Simply need less. When you need, when you, when you need something, ask yourself, do I really need this or do I just want this? So simplification, and that is the solution to so much of this, not needing things nearly as much in the first place. Most of us watching this video, well, most of us already have enough and we don't really need much more. So those are eight tips. We're talking about solutions, things that you can do, whether you're in sunny Costa Rica or Southern California, or you're right now sitting in freezing cold Montreal, wherever you are, these are eight things that can be done. These are solutions. So if you got a lot out of this video, then I definitely recommend subscribing because there is a lot more to come. And if you want this video to spread and you want this information to spread, then comment and like this because that gets this into the algorithm for YouTube to get it out there. And uh, also ask questions uh, as well. And uh, yeah, so of course, share it with friends and family too, people that you think can be inspired by this and will make a positive change. So with that being said, it's great to be here. It's uh, wonderful to spend a little time with you all. Hope you enjoyed the Greenfield, Rob Greenfield Recycled Cabin. And of course, you can stay here. You can, you can rent this place too. I don't own this place. I don't manage it. It's just named after me. But St. Michael's Sustainable Community runs it and you can, you can rent this along with other cool places. So love you all very much and see you soon.